Oh, Pompey. Uh, uh, yes, sir, Master 
Apollo. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner. Ponte, Sir John said that I could borrow you to help me get some of my stuff ready. Uh, yes, sir, Master Marlowe. Just as soon as I go and tell the master, sir. Thank you. Master, uh, Mr. Marlowe wants to know, can I go and help him pack his things, sir? Uh, certainly, Pompey. Aren't you taking Master Jerry home? Oh, Jerry, uh, run along with Pompey. Yes, come, Master Jerry. We got to go see the Indians. I've got to get my things together and change. I'll see you later. Good morning, Sir John. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Commissioner. You're all very fortunate to be able to go on this expedition. Splendid opportunity. You'll all become rich. That's what they told Father about this Yadkin. Splendid opportunities. You'll all become rich. I don't have to tell you there were no fortunes made here. Now, now, dear, please, please. This will be different. How do you know it'll be different? Nobody's even seen the place except Daniel Boone. And what is he? A dreamer. Always chasing the next horizon. Uh, nothing of the kind. He's a man with imagination and foresight. Oh, quite so, quite so. Maybe you're right. Well, excuse me, Father. I have a dozen things to do before we leave. Good day, Commissioner. Uh, very highly strung, Commissioner. Footprint. Yes. There's a white man with them. Yes, prisoner. No, no prisoner, Black Eagle. <laughs> if he were captive, he'd be bound and take short steps. This man takes long steps. This man's a leader. Only one white leader of Indian. Simon Gurdy. What would he be doing down here 400 miles from his village? Maybe he hear about your party going across mountains. Hate white men. Your party, many scalps, many horses. Gertie, we've got to bring him in. The man horses here. Get over there, get over there. Roll on me, roll on me. Keep a going till my soul get there. Oh, been reading. Been rocking all along the way. I know there's something wrong. It's been moaning that same old song. Eternal judgment. Weaving rock, roll on weave and find a home. So I guess so, dear. It's gonna be lots of fun. You think we'll see any Indians? I hope not. We have enough trouble without Indians, I'm afraid. You can. You do? You? Oh, I haven't seen very much of him. I like Mr. Boone right off. And, uh, and he likes you. Oh, I'm not interested whether he does. Did he really say nothing? No. But I'm sure you'd say so if I had him. Don't you dare. And don't you even let him know we talked about him. Can I be of any help, Miss Virginia? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Marlowe. Thank you. Everything's attended to. Come here. Are you going with us, Mr. Marlowe? Yes, Jerry. You and I are going to be fellow adventurers. Between us, we'll have to take care of your sister, won't we? Yes, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll pay my respects to your father. Virginia. I don't like him. Jerry, you mustn't say a thing like that. That's very rude. Mr. Marlowe's a nice gentleman. And you must be polite to him. I'll be polite, but I won't mean it. Sir John? Well, you look like a frontiersman, Marlowe. <laughs> Though I must say that I thought an expedition of this kind was a bit out of your line. I expected you'd be returning to Richmond. As a matter of fact, that was my intention. But I have a feeling that this new country offers great possibilities. I think I we'd see. better put Jerry up on the feet, Father. He'd be out of the way there. All right, dear. Up you go, young man. If we don't start soon, we'll never make that first leg by sundown. 
We can't do anything till Boone gets here. For two years now, he's been planning this expedition. And now, when everybody's ready, he has to go off on one of his hunting trips. There must be some very good reason for his absence. Well, I suppose all we can do is to sit here and wait for him to choose to come in. Sit here? Supposing something's happened. Why don't some of you men go out and look for him? Uh, Bert! 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 You won't show up yet? I ain't seen him. Don't you think we'd better try and pick up his trail? Wouldn't do no harm. I'll get Finch and a few of the boys. Right. Thought you were a rich one, Boone. Where are you headed for? I'm on my way to Yadkin. Hmm. Let me see that knife. You fools! It's only a trick! Don't move, Gertie. What's this? Another joke? This is no joke. And don't try anything. You're covered from the brush. He's getting worried about you, Daniel. Stop to pick up a friend of yours. Moses in the cradle. It's Gertie. Well, well, here's the great scalper. Time you had a haircut yourself, Gertie. Easy, Joe. Save it until we get the Adkin.
all this rumpus. I brought in Simon Gertie. Yes, yes, I know all that. What was he doing? I wasn't doing nothing. Quiet. Well, Boo, what is the charge? It's a matter of common knowledge, Commissioner. That Gertie has murdered and scalped scores of settlers, men, women, and children. And is continually arousing the tribes against us. That's a lie. Many a time I kept the tribes from burning white settlements. Ain't you the little angel of mercy? What's the use of all the arguments? Hand him over to us. Well, well, you wouldn't be rough with us, would you, Commissioner? <laughs> Just a minute, friend. We're not going to lose anything by going slow. We'll see that justice is done. Good for you, Dan. Where were you? Where were you? All right, then. That's fine. But the commissioner is in charge here. And we've got to respect his authority. Now then, my man, what have you to say for yourself? I say he ain't got no right to drag me in this way. I was out on a peaceful hunting trip with a small party of braves. Anything you had against me was wiped out when the peace was signed. Unless you can bring proof of some new crime, Boone, I don't see how we can hold him. As he says, when the peace treaty was signed, a general amnesty was granted to all the tribes. That only applied to Redskin. Gertie is a white man. Who's a white man? I'm a chief of the Lion Dog. Been adopted into the tribe, all regular, with full ceremony. And if anything happens, it'll start the tribe war path again. There's a certain amount of truth in what he says, Boone. His death at this time might stir up serious trouble. There's far more trouble if he's allowed to live. No Indian on the frontier can equal the record of his massacre. No doubt everything you say is true, Boone. But we've given our word to the Indians, and we must respect. Even to the extent of letting this blackguard go. I know it was going to end like this. Are you going to let the Lord teach it? Let's get a rope. Yeah. Wait a minute. Can Lord talk stop Gertie when he's got a tomahawk in one hand and a scalping knife in the other? Oh. No. Would you let a rattlesnake get another chance? No. Would you give a woman a chance? No. I say, don't give this scalping burning Gertie another chance. Oh. Law is the law, and we must respect it. You are the only man that can handle this crowd, and I depend on you to prevent any violence. As you have just heard, this man is protected by the peace treaty. In a few minutes, we'll be setting out on a 500-mile journey over mountains and through forests to a new Indian country, never before settled by white people. If we hang Gertie, the Indians will claim we have broken faith with them. And this will bring down on your head and your family the war hatchets of his redskin friends. I say Gertie's life isn't worth it. You think I'm right? Raise your hand. Get his horse, Black Eagle. You're free, Gertie. Get back to your tribe and don't ever show your face in a white settlement again. And if you take my advice, Boom, you'll never show your face outside a white settlement again.
Well, my friend, I'm afraid I won't be seeing you for some time. Each man to his duties, Marlowe. I congratulate you on your patriotic spirit in helping to open new, untitled lands for settlement. Yes, and don't forget that the most important thing about the Anderson is that those titles get into the proper hands. Exactly. And think of no better hands than yours and mine. Don't lose any time in sending in a full report. Don't worry. I'll bring it myself. Good morning, Pretty hard day, Daniel. Don't you think we ought to make camp? I know it's been hard, but we haven't covered much ground. I want to get to the river before sundown. go bring cattle. Yes, they got farther ahead than I thought they would. But uh, I'll send someone else. I want you here with me. Let me see. Marlo, I want you to ride ahead and bring back the herd. Tell the boys we're going to camp here tonight. But I'd, I'd have to swim that river. Those boys swam it. Occurred to me we're getting pretty fur ahead. Some of them darn wagons must have broke down again. Well, maybe we ought to wait for them to catch up. Wait, nothing. Don't give orders for us not to make camp until sundown, so we better keep moving. Indians friendly? 
I mean, they wouldn't hurt a colored man, would they? Indian don't like black men. Hair too short. Huh? Indian like long hair. Help easy. Well, if the scalp no good, why don't they let it alone? I can see why the Indians don't like the white man. They ain't got nothing in common. Now, the colored man and the red man, they're different. They all belong to the same family. Huh? Well, what I mean is, they both have been baked by the sun. Now, the Indian or the red man, he's just a little bit underdone. Oh. Oh, I give up, I give up. Want to fight again? No, I'm afraid your sister might think I'm teaching a bad habit. You won't see it. She went for a walk. Walk? Where? I don't know. Someplace. You know, I wish you knew Virginia a whole lot. Why? Then she'd like you and you'd come around all the time like Mr. Marlowe. Hmm. Does she, uh... Does she like Mr. Marlowe very much? Yes, so. They're always laughing and talking. You know, I don't think Mr. Marlowe's very much fun. Do you? Well, now listen. About time you were in bed, young fellow. We've got to get an early start in the morning. Can you let me ride your horse again tomorrow? I promise it'll ride to sleep. I will. Honest, I will. Up she comes. Up. Good night. Take you this way. Always when I'm with you, my dear Virginia. And it seems to me that the moon and I had better say goodnight. Oh, no, please, don't go. I'm serious, really, I am. I'm much too tired to be serious. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Boone. Are you rounding up the missing members of your flock? No, I came to see if the captain was back. Where did you leave the model? I asked you a question. Did you carry out my order? No. Why not? You've plenty of boys around here to run your errand. I didn't join this expedition to play messenger. Well, oh, as long as you're with this expedition, you'll do as I say. Keep your hands off me. Stop that. I see no reason for flying into a blind rage simply because Mr. Marlowe didn't jump to your orders. My orders are given for the common good. I'm responsible for the lives of all of us. I appreciate that. But I'm sure Mr. Marlowe didn't realize the matter was so important. I'm sorry I lost my temper. You brought it on yourself, Stevie. You were in the wrong, you know, and you're very ill-mannered. Good night. Where go? Now I know you're a liar. I've seen you shoot. Well, you can't even see nothing at a hundred yards loan, did it? That's right. I seen him fire the turkey at 50 feet, and he missed it. If that's so, I can bring down a turkey with a knife at 50 feet. You don't quit that yapping, I'll bring you down with a good swift kick. Ah, oh, good thing. That's what I've been trying to do for 15 minutes. Hard, Daniel. The herd was scattered last night. Redskins? Yes. What about the boys? Well, killed? Who done it? Wine dog. Goody? Yes, we trailed them for a while, but they've gone north fast on a long start. 
Better take a half a dozen men, get out there, and uh, see if you can't round up that herd. Joe, take three boys, get out there as fast as you can, and bury the body. Right. What's the order, Zen? We go right on. Hollow, I'll give you ten minutes to clear out. Clear out? But you can't do that to me, Boone. I'd die out here alone. You heard what I said. Virginia! Virginia! Boone's given me ten minutes to get out. He blames me for that killing. You are to blame. If you'd gone last night, this never would have happened. Yes, I didn't think it was that important. I never dreamt they'd be killed. You know I didn't. Please, Virginia, you must help me. Talk to Boone. He won't listen to me. Oh, yes, he will. He'll do anything you ask. I know he will. Please, Virginia. I'll die if I'm left here alone. You must help me, please. Joe, get the cattle going. Don't let him get too far ahead. Mr. Boone. Yes? Miss Marlowe just told me you ordered him to leave. That's right. Well, where'd he go? Back where he came from. You know that's impossible. He's not like you or the others who've been brought up in the forest. I'll find his way back to Yagnome. I'm giving him a better chance he gave those boys last night. Oh, I know the wrong. He didn't do it deliberately. Killing Stephen won't bring back those poor boys. We've had enough death, please. I promise you'll have no more trouble. Please let him stay. All right. Tell him he can stay. White squaw want Marlow. You want white squaw. Why not shoot Marlow? Take squaw. That's not the white man's way, Black Eagle. White way, no good. White man, soft here. Pretty soon, soft here. You're right.
where we will build our new home. Oh, Lord, we thank thee that thou hast brought us safely across these mountains and hast spread before us this beautiful valley for our home. Amen. without making one final effort. It's no use. Virginia, you're condemning yourself to a life of drudgery. I'm going back to great wealth. Come with me. As my wife, you can have anything in the world you want. I have everything I want right here, thank you. Why don't you be honest about yourself? Honest? Yes. You're in love with Boo. I think you'd better go. Good luck, Ben. You ought to make Yadkin in about 30 days. Tell everybody what we've got here and bring back with you as many families as you can. Right. <laughs> hey, Santa, take good care of it, Ben, and be sure it gets delivered. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that kind of whiskey, Ben. And don't drink it before you get back. <laughs> I twisted my ankle. If I sit down for a few minutes, I think it'll be all right. Let me help you. Now that the last log is laid and the settlement completed, what shall we call it? What's the matter with New Yadkin? That's where we all come from. We're on the Kaintuki River. Why not call it Kaintuki City? That's an Indian name. And I don't name nothing after no redskin. What do you think, Sir John? Well, uh... Oh, uh, Pompey, uh, we're trying to find a name for the settlement. Uh, what would you suggest? Well, sir, it appears to me it'd be mighty nice to name it after Mr. Boone, sir. Pompey, you hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the future of Boonesborough. Well, you know. Oh, I suppose we'd better get it over with before you burst. And do you remember what you're going to say? Yes, sir. I've been saying it over and over. Oh, right. uh, Pompey, uh, go about quietly and tell everyone to assemble over here. Uh, yes, sir, Sir John. Right away, sir. Come on. I really should go back to the tables and help. Oh, I think you've done enough. Besides, remember your ankle. There really isn't anything wrong with it. 
mighty kind of you, Miss Randolph, if you could remain lame a little longer. I'll try, Mr. Boone. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we're both laughing at the same thing. Mr. Boone, Miss Randolph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's silly to be so formal, isn't it? Let's stop it. All right, Daniel. Or do you prefer Daniel? I like it any way you say it, Virginia. Mr. Boone, sir. Yes, Pompey. Uh, the gentleman would like to see you, sir. All right, I'll be right over. Yes, sir. All right. Here he is. Come on, Daniel. Make way, folks. Make way, Daniel. Virginia, greeting. By these presents be it known that the territory west of the Cumberland Mountains, known herefore as the Valley of Cane to Key, is hereby incorporated into the Commonwealth of Virginia. Wherefore be it known to all those who lay claim to lands in the aforesaid territory that unless on or before the 15th day of October of the year of our Lord, 1775, they register their claims to this land in proper authorities in Richmond, together with the prestigious right, their claims to title in such lands as they now presume to hold, shall be declared null and void. What? Who has filed proper claims? Well, according to that, we haven't got time to file them. We hold squatters right. That's always been title enough. Set it legal in Richmond. <laughs> if you resist, they'll send militia and drive you off. Well, I can <laughs> Friends, please, please. We won't gain anything by armed resistance. I'll talk to the governor. If we have to do all this legal business, I'm sure he'll give us reasonable time to do it. In. Friends, you're welcome to stay and refresh yourselves. We'll be returning to Virginia tomorrow. If you care to come with us... No, I'm leaving right away. Virginia. Wouldn't it do just as well if you wrote a letter to the governor explaining everything? These men are leaving tomorrow. They could take it. Save you that long trip. I'm afraid not, Virginia. I'm sure everything will straighten out all right, but I don't want to leave anything to chance. You will be careful. 
Is there anyone you care to send a message to in Richmond? No. Hi, Virginia. Your usual good luck seems to be deserting you, my lad. <laughs> we're getting our own back for once, Marlowe. Oh, my luck will change. Come in. What is it, Peter? It's that Mr. Boone again, sir. I'm afraid that I'm busy. I'm telling him to come back some other time. I told him that, sir, but he's very insistent. He's been trying to see you for three days, and he says he won't go until he has. Well, it's becoming really a nuisance. Now, why don't you see him and get it over with? After all, you you are the Attorney General, you know. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. But I hate to stop the game right now. Well, Peter, clean up this stuff. Yes. And now, gentlemen, let us assume a judicial attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Boone, the Attorney General will see you. Yes, Mr. Boone? Uh, sir, the Governor has referred me to you. He said your office takes care of all land disputes. Quite correct. Well, sir, I've come to Richmond to straighten out the matter of title to our lands on the Cane Tuki River. Uh, yes. I discussed that matter with the governor. But I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. You were notified to file your claim in the proper manner, which you failed to do. But you didn't give us time for that. Besides, we've never had to file title before. Squatters' rights have never been questioned. I found that, Valley. We spent two years organizing an expedition to settle it. We cleared it, planted it, and built our home. If that is entitled, then what is? I'm sorry, Mr. Boone, but we cannot make an exception in your case. When you land the statement of the state, it falls immediately under its law. As a matter of fact, the claim on this land already has been filed. It cannot be set aside. It isn't hard to file that claim. I came here honestly expecting that this office would protect us in our just claims to these lands. Instead, I find myself among the gang of thieves who have stolen them. Colonel Luther, one more word and I'll put you under arrest. You're enjoying yourself, aren't you, Marlowe? Immense. I haven't forgotten, Mr. Boone, that you once threatened to turn me out into the wilderness. Very soon now, I shall have the very great pleasure of driving you and your rabble off my property. Brothers, sad, long time now. Can't help it, Black Eagle. How can I face those people? How can I tell them their lands and their homes have been stolen? No, let's take. Fight! That's what I want to avoid. No. I guess we'll have to go somewhere else and start all over again. You make fire. I could get it. You 
बाबा था I say to you, my brothers of the Cherokees, Wyandots, Tawas, the Shawnees, that now is the time to strike. Already the whites have advanced over the mountains and have built a strong stockaded village in the heart of your hunting ground, the King Chuki. Now it is but one small village. Tomorrow it'll be two, then three, then four, and you'll be driven farther and farther west. I got a little score to settle with your Yadkin crowd. You'll never take Boomsboro, Gertie. It's too well fortified. There are too many good rifles there. Look around, Joe. This is only part of our force. Besides, your friends in Boomsboro won't be expecting us. That's why we left them alone so long. So they'd get careless. Smart, eh? I wish I had let them hang you in Yadkin. You'll wish more than that before I get through with you. Time up! Get to the fire!
What happened? Indian, sound the alarm. Everybody, quickly, quickly. Gertie has roused the tribes against us. There are five tribes of Indians watching to attack us. I want all the lead turned into shot. Get the cattle in. See that the water tanks are filled. Indians, Indians. Let him in. can't hold out any longer. We've got to hold out. Well, how are we going to do it then? 
The powder and shot's all gone. We ain't got enough water left, even for the wounded. We can't hold them off if they come at us again. And this time, they'll bring their fire bundles right up to the stockade. Then we'll be roasted alive. Why don't we make terms with them? You can't make terms with Gertie. He's sworn to wipe out every one of us. Keep up your courage. Rain, we may have a chance. I won't count in the rain now. It's been like this for 24 hours. They're coming back! They're bringing fire bundles! I'm not going. I'm not going to leave here. I'm going to sit home. Now, maybe one of those old tricks. They might be laying a trap for us. I doubt it, Joe. I slipped out last night and had a look around. There wasn't a sign of them anywhere. I think they slid out for good. I hope you're right, then. Just looking around. He'll be back pretty soon.
Jerry. Jerry. Is he hurt, Mustafa? Dead, Pompey. darling. Not a bit. Are you sure you want to come with me to the new western country? I'll go anywhere with you, darling. We must find new homes for these people. 